Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hi guys, I hope that whenever and wherever in the world you are when you hear this recording, that you are able to be patient and keep your wits about you in this time in which we are being bombarded by the most intense cosmic energy. I told you about a week ago we had the sun blasting us with magnetic magneto plasma. I don't know. Magnetic, I guess that would be the word. Magnetic plasma and the earth, all the giant crystals that are underneath the earth have been blasting back towards the sun and we're like stuck between all of this massive energy bursts that are going between three and four million miles per hour in either direction. And we're just the humans, the puny humans caught in the middle of this. It's been absolutely amazing. Like today, I just could barely keep my eyes open. I have, I'm having tons of trouble with electronics, mercury retrograde being what it is, of course. Um, always having problems with that during mercury retrograde periods, but this is weird. This is beyond weird. Like, um, first of all, I went to bed at two in the morning. Normally I'm in bed by five, six, seven in the morning and two in the morning. I was so exhausted last night, finished the show really early. I think I had it published by like 10 or 11 my time. So it was like really, really early yesterday. And so my kid and I decided to stay up and watch Atypical, which is a show we watch together. We don't watch it separate from one another. We have just a few shows we save for each other, you know, so we could have some family time together and hang out. And so um, I made a wonderful dinner last night and we just had a really good exchange in the evening. And we both went to bed around two in the morning and that was it. Went to bed, um, fell asleep almost right away. And I didn't get out of bed till about five in the afternoon. I was up for maybe an hour in between. I woke up early in the morning, about 11 early ish for me. And about 11, I woke up, I had a little bit of a energy drink, like a guarana juice, which is a, a plant that grows here in Ecuador. And it's the same is what it's the same flavor as Red Bull, but I get it for like, they, they have them here for 50 cents or a dollar. And it's like twice as much. It's really, <laughs> really good. Less sugar. Anyway, I love the flavor of this berry. And sometimes I do coffee. Sometimes I do that. But anyway, I drink a little, you know, I drank a little bit of that and I'd like fall asleep for two more hours and get up and have a little bit more and then fall asleep again. But I mean, like I, I slept all told about 13 hours, 12 or 13 hours. Like it was crazy. And then I got up and I thought, well, I must be well rested now. Got up and like five, 10 minutes later, I got hit with this cosmic nap energy again, where I just couldn't keep my eyes open. I don't even think I looked outside today. I just, it was, I was just completely out of it. And, um, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine today, a new friend, he's a listener and we were talking, um, he, I'm going to have him hopefully tonight as a guest on the show. Uh, we're trying to work it out. Um, and everything earlier in the day, everything was going fine, but we had a conversation in the afternoon and I realized I better charge up my phone before doing the show. And I was down to like 35% and 90 minutes later, after charging for 90 minutes, my phone was up to 58%. And then another hour later, it was still at 58%. It's like, wait a minute. It's been plugged in. It charged like 20% and suddenly it's not working. And I'm like, this is freaking weird. You know, and I was casting something from my phone, but usually it still charges while I'm doing that. So plugged it into a different plugin and lo and behold, in 20 minutes, it went up to 71% and 20 minutes later went up to a hundred. And the phone itself said it's going to take five and a half hours to charge it up. It never takes that long. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with my phone? I kept turning it off, turning it back on three, four times. Um, it's been crazy. 
But hopefully um, my guest, uh, Jude DeKoff, is going to be with us tonight. He's working on a little project for me. He's doing astrology for my kids. And so hopefully he'll have a way you guys can get this done for you. He has the gift of vision of all sorts, all manner of galactic things. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Andrew Bartsis or the Cosmic Empress. They both have channels on YouTube and they both can see the galactic history. Uh, Andrew Bartsis's channel is the Galactic Historian and Cosmic Empress is the name of, and I, I now I'm not, I don't know her name, but she's in the West Coast in Canada. And um, I love her channel. Her channel is amazing. In fact, both of them are good good resources if you're interested in starseed origins so i met this person and he knows all about starseed origins and so he found a way to do a chart to be able to tell you based on your birth chart what planets you have hailed from where you have lived before in other lifetimes and where you're most likely to be from like originally so apparently I'm I've been um, I've had infor- you know some of my information came through that I have uh, a lot of Orion energy and I, uh, Rigel energy as well as um, oh what else he said it was like pretty trippy um, a little bit Arcturian but it looks like overall I am, I've got the Antares energy. Overall, he says, I think you're from Antares um, originally. You know, like that's like your most pulled in your chart. It's like the most intense power out of all of them. So I have like five or six of them. I'm like, oh my God. But he said, it looks like you might have two lives in Orion. And I'm like, well, in that galaxy, I'm actually living right now in, in simultaneous lives in different dimensions in, um, in Orion right now. And sometimes I go and visit those, but I think maybe he might've said also Andromeda and possibly maybe not, but, um, this is a trip. I mean, I've never even heard of this, that you could do this with your chart. And, um, I thought that was really strange. He's doing, doing this for my kids so I can understand them a little better, you know, if you understand where people are from, you understand them a little more, right? <laughs> but um, another weird, weird, weird thing he said, and this is, I think I may or may not have mentioned this. I don't know if I did, that my oldest kid had has been um, fainting um, just randomly at just random times without any, um, you know, not, like there's like no common factor. It's not like when he eats this kind of food or drinks this kind of drink, then boom, he faints. It's just been this random fainting thing that's been happening for a couple of years now. And it, it, it got a little bit more heightened when he moved to the Bay area. I thought it maybe was due to stress, but it's gotta be due to some kind of brain thing. So he had it tested and it turns out he has a cyst on his pineal gland. And he says, you know, they say it happens in 1% of the population. It's extremely rare, but um, it might account for, you know, my, you know, sense of telepathy. And it might account for my, or not telepathy, my psychic powers, he said. He says my psychic abilities and also my other magical abilities. And he does. He has, like, these abilities where he could just look at a street light and it goes out. And I, I could do it, too, but not to the extent that he can, right? So I thought that was really strange, and I've been worried about my kid for a long time. We've been waiting for the brain scans to come back, and that was what the results were. He's got a cyst on his pineal gland, which is freaky, right? Totally bizarre. You know, like, there's a 99 chance, 99% chance you don't have it, and this is, he's the 1%. It's weird. So, um, so this person I've been talking to today, Jude Dickhoff, it turns out that he is also in that 1%. He also has this massive ability to see into other dimensions and realms and 
really psychic and, um, same thing. So this is like, it's like really starting to freak me out. Like, like within less than a week, I had never heard of this condition in my life. And within less than a week, two cases and both people are very gifted magically and very psychic. So, um, one of them's my kid and then the other one is Jude and Jude and I talked today. He's like, you know, you and I, we've known each other for like hundreds of thousands of years. Like we've, we were created in the beginning together. And I remember you, I really, really remember you. Like, you know, we talked in where we're talking. He was like, Oh my God, I totally remember you. We're like such good friends. And we started like remembering weird things like this last life, um, standing in line, being so excited, um, that we're going to go and be born and, you know, on earth again. And we were standing in line to, um, pick out like our, like features, things we're going to, you know, have benefits and features and, you know, um, (laughs) what you're going to do. Like you get to pick out your body, you get to pick out your, um, you know, your parents, you get to pick out your, uh, abilities, your shortcomings, you know, like having asthma or having a temper issue or having, um, autism or ADD. Um, and he has ADHD also as does my oldest kid. So, um, and my youngest too, I think. So I think we all have AD, ADD or ADHD. Um, I'm not as hi- hyperactive as my kids, but maybe cause I'm older. I don't know, but the ability to focus sometimes is kind of crazy. You know, just, it's really hard to do. And also just easily distracted by usually shiny, bright, not shite, (laughs) shiny and bright together equals shite. No, shiny and bright objects or usually animals distract me. Drives my son crazy, my youngest, when we're having a deep, serious conversation and then the pigeons fly to the window and start moving their heads, bobbing their heads around, trying to get my attention and and I'm always like, oh, hey, guys, you know, and oh, it's so irritating for my kid. The ADD is just, it's intense. It's sometimes it's really hard to deal with. But, um, but so I don't know. It was just this very interesting conversation. But what, the, but the weird thing is, I mean, he said it, it's taken him now a couple hours to try to upload some photographs that are just not going on his computer. He has an extremely top like expensive top of the line computer. And it's just not, it's going so slow suddenly out of nowhere. And I've been having, um, issues all day with my electronics as well. So if you guys are having problems with your electronics and if you guys are having, um, I don't need this overwhelming feeling of like, you're totally fine. And then all of a sudden that's on you to sleep by, <laughs> um, yeah, there's that. There's a lot of, lot of that going around, but I'd had this, um, we had been eat or, you know, texting each other for about 30 minutes in between all of my multiple naps today. And he said, you know, I feel that you've got a lot of Antares star people hanging out around you. I feel their energy around you. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm going to go take a nap. So I laid down and I said, okay, I want my Antares star family around me. I want to feel you guys hugging me and I'm sending you love and I want to feel your love because I don't want to feel alone anymore. If you guys are really my real family and that's where I come from, I want your support and I want to know you, right? So all of a sudden I felt like all, I felt like five or six people, like they were hugging me energetically, not physically. I didn't feel it physically, but I felt this energetic hug and it was like, Oh, Oh, I finally, for the first time in a long time, I felt loved and I didn't feel like I was abandoned and that I was completely alone. Um, and it's weird. I think it was just because it was my star family that I had been feeling lonely for. And it was like a really cool and weird insight to have. But you guys know that I've been talking about the TV show out of this world for a while because at night I like to watch this show when I'm done working, um, sometimes I'll, I'll grab something to eat or have a cup of tea right before I sleep. You know, sometimes I'm, I sleep really long hours and I never know. Sometimes I sleep six hours and I'm fine. Other times I sleep 16 hours and I feel like I want to at least have some kind of uh, food in my stomach so that 
you know, it can kind of prolong my blood sugar, you know, so I don't have blood sugar issues. So I'll eat, you know, right before I sleep sometimes, just like something light, like a bowl of popcorn or, you know, fruit or mostly, usually vegetables like celery with cream cheese. And like tonight I've got radishes, I've got bell peppers, and I'm just going to chop up fresh vegetables or nice and cold and I'll eat that for a snack. But um, anyway, I was... I was always like watching the show out of this world. And when it was on TV back in the day in the nineties, I was watching it all the time. And I always felt weird when they would say that her father was from Antares, the planet, well, or that it's the Antares star system, he would say. And I thought that was so like completely like that's my home. I, I kind of felt like, well, I'm from there too. That's so cool. So I have to watch this because I think she's my cousin or something. And I never really verbalized it out loud like that, but I was somehow secretly felt it. And I remember seeing an, a, a spaceship in Santa Barbara at the beach and I saw it and I was, I remember I was like screaming, take me with you. I want to travel with you. <laughs> I don't know, you know, take me home. And I felt so sad. Like I couldn't go home. Like I'm here on a mission and so I have the star seed thing about me and, but I've been around for a long fricking time. And, and, um, it was nice to find this person, um, Jude <laughs> who, you know, has a lot more of a vision of what's gone on outside of earth. It's funny. Cause I remember a lot of my past lives on earth and he remembers his past lives on all these other planets. And I'm just now kind of unraveling, where I am in other dimensions on other planets. I, I don't even remember. I remember one past life where our planet accidentally blew up and I was a scientist and the sky was like purple. And my, uh, my friend Helen and I, we were scientists and we were growing plants in a lab and running experiments. And we had like a lot of beakers and test tubes and we were really weird looking. I don't know. We had I think we might have had like purple skin or something. We weren't, we weren't like we are now. It was totally different. I can't even remember, you know, but I do remember that we were, um, kind of, we were under a biodome and it was kind of like glass and we had to wear hazmat suits to get between that and our houses or between that and any other building. And it was pretty crazy. It was like very dangerous atmosphere you can breathe the the um, atmosphere and so everything was um because we had already screwed up our environment so badly and i she always told me this is the reason why we're here in this planet we have to make sure we save the environment and she lives in yosemite um california in the yosemite park and she always believed that that was our mission like you know that we had to either do it separately or together but but we know each other from that life. And, and so the environment's super important for both of us. And that's been a theme in our lives. Um, you know, not really together so much, but it's always been a theme in my life. It always was in hers, you know, fighting for animal rights and fighting for, you know, um, like for me, it's always been about the wolves and the whales and the dolphins and, you know, pretty much marine life and donated money for years when I could. And, you know, to the conservational efforts. And I vote towards people that would, you know, be good for the environment. You know, it's just my things, but it's one of my things anyway. But, um, I don't know. It's like, I've never really had it gotten to the point where I'm going to start questioning all the planets I lived on in past lives. And now I meet this person and I've been watching the cosmic empress and, and Andrew Bartzis who both do this. And here this person comes along right now going, well, guess what? You're Antari and you're Antarian from Antares. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was like my favorite show. I go, have you ever heard of that show out of this world? And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah, with Evie. I love that show. And he's quite a bit younger than me. So it's kind of neat that he heard about it. So really, really cool stuff. Okay, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to pause this for a second and blow my nose. I'm having allergies. That's the other things. Like I, I totally dusted my room yesterday. I changed all my sheets and I've just been still with massive allergies and it doesn't make any sense. My sheets weren't even dusty, but I thought, well, 
if I change it, maybe it'll, it'll be better, but maybe it's just the eucalyptus across the street blooming again. I don't know. All right, let me pause this for a sec. All right. Well, here you go. Um, let's get into the Shimon Resonance. Um, you know, it's so funny to me that people are on YouTube and they, they'll like go to these YouTube videos and this lady today, she was saying, you know, the Shimon Resonance was really high the other day. And this is like a week ago. It was 98. And this person wrote, that's the third highest number in human history. Oh my God. And I'm like, uh, you know, you could get off the disclosure news on it website and actually go to heart mouth and see where in Honolulu, South Africa, just a couple weeks ago it was over 600, you know, because like it's consistently over a hundred in all these other cities. And I don't know what's going on in Italy. If this is exactly where it is, or if it's in Tomsk, um, Russia, I don't know exactly. This is a chart time is based in Tomsk, but I don't know where the actual equipment measuring this is, but I mean, this, this one is always the lowest number. <laughs> it's always been the lowest number. And since I started looking at the heart math and I report that to you guys, it's always been extremely high or at a dead zero, you know, and I don't know. The Italian one gives you a little bit of a picture, but not at all accurate as to what's going on. And that's why I wasn't satisfied with what I was feeling with my, um, what I was feeling with my, uh, energy levels and how this really, really affects me. And it's like, I'll go there and it's like, what? 20? What? How is it only 20 Hertz frequency when I feel freaking exhausted? Like we've been bombarded by a ton of energy. But then now they start going to Heart Math Institute. It's like, ah, yeah, okay. All right. You know, now it makes a lot more sense. If you're really sensitive to energy, you're not going to want just the one. You want all of the information, right? For all seven cities, not just one. Anyway, so disclosurenews.it um, at nine in the morning says the graph in the first part of today shows how the constant slight movement that began yesterday is continuing. Today, we have the strongest peak of the last three days, which reached 32 hertz frequency. And then at 1700 reports, the slight movements have continued throughout the day. The highest peak is the one reported previously, but shortly after nine, we see another variation that reached 27. So see, it's like, it's like not even up to 40 there. It's so strange, you know, um, you know, I don't know why it's like so low, but anyway, let's go over to heartmouth.org. California start off at 65 at midnight and, and by 5 a.m. they were at 61 and in, uh, Hufuf, Saudi Arabia, they, they actually went up from zero. They were at zero yesterday and they're now at six at zero at, um, midnight. And then they still stayed across at six until 5 a.m. So that's a little bit different than what happened when it was zero in Hulului. All right. Um, Lithuania was at 108 at midnight and went up to 111. Yay. There's a nice master number for you, 111. Uh, Alberta, Canada started off at 106 hertz frequency at zero and went up to 108 by 5 a.m. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Hofuf. No, I'm sorry, that's not Hofufa. Hello, Northland. Northland, New Zealand start off at 74 hertz frequency and went up to 82 by 5 a.m. And the <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner tonight <laughs> is actually Hulului. They started off at um, midnight at 249 hertz frequency and by 5 a.m. they were up to 274 that just blows my mind how high this thing can get. All right. Um, all right. Here we are at uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace website, A Course in Miracles, or ACIM.org. We are still at the review, Lesson 150. I believe this will be the final review. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But Lesson 150 starts with the basic idea for the week. My mind holds only what I think with God. My mind holds only what I think with 
God. And the two thoughts besides that for the day are taken from Lesson 139. I will accept atonement for myself. I will accept at one for myself. Because remember, atonement is also at one mint. Feeling your oneness with divine creator so that all the other stuff falls to the wayside because it's all an illusion. Okay, now taken from lesson 140, the thought is only salvation can be said to cure. Only salvation can be said to cure. So there it is. Um, salvation is when you accept the atonement or the at one minute with, uh, you know, with yourself and God. Like it's once you realize your oneness, then you start loving everybody and forgiveness is already kind of an automatic thing. And you realize that that is the cure for everything. All the things that you thought hurt you didn't really hurt you because you've always been one with God. Everything else has been an illusion. All right, guys, I am just, it's like, I need to, I need to take a break. And when I come back, hopefully we will be having an interview with Jude Decove. In fact, I have to ask him how to pronounce his name. So in case I uh, get it wrong, but (laughs) I'll be back right after these messages. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you. Hey, Jude. (laughs) Are you there? Okay, we're going to have to open up um, like a subspace channel between us so that the uh, spirits don't stop the transmission. Oh, yeah. You'll have to take you care of that. You're better at that than I am. Right. I just did it. I just did it. Now I can hear you. Um, I had to do this the last interview, too. I just it's like I've got to open up the fabric of space time reality just yeah, but to... like before you called me I felt it when you were doing your little transmission with your guy because I my pineal gland busted open for no reason when I was doing your astrology and I don't <laughs> use, yeah I don't use psychic energy to really do astrology I mean to click through you know like it's so it was weird okay well we're here now and everyone can hear you so everybody this is 
uh, Jude Dekoff. Is that right or Dekoff? It's Dekoff. I don't know how to speak. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Okay. All right. I'm here with Jude Dekoff. D- God damn it. It's- <laughs> He's taken over your mouth already. He's ch- you're channeling already because you're, you're trying to say my name from when, before when we. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, all right. And well, tell me a little bit about you because you were in a book. You were in a magazine yeah. with Sylvia. You were in a book. Um, I was in a book into like when the Ascension, like not when it first started because that's when you were around, but like the next little movement of it in like 1999 to 2004, like I found this spiritualist church and like they, they told me that I was going to be a, a reader and I was like, You're, no way. And they told me I was going to be in a book and then I was like four years later. So it started kind of early, but so that was 1999. And then in 2004, I literally started listening to two podcasts. I called in for a free reading. And then the person who was running the worldpuja.org at that point was Maureen Moss. And and yeah, and I called in and Dr. Meg Blackburn and Lucy was the co-host with Maureen Moss. And that was in 2004. And I worked with her till 2007 to be in the book Conversations with the Children of Now. And I was the oldest kid in that book. And those kids... I mean, some of them had autism, some of them had MS, some of them could not move, but they came to me in my dreams. Like, it was the weirdest thing. And so they they were born with more memory than even me. So it, it's getting crazy. And that's when I knew that it was like, okay, it's on. But then, like, I took a 12-year hiatus because I got a bad reading in Casadega, which is a spiritualist camp in Florida, which is what started the Atlantean thing. Okay, and that's what we wanted to talk about tonight is right. you have memories of having lived in Atlantis and all the things that went on there. So let's talk about that. I want to hear right. about that. What sparked the memories of Atlantis? Okay, so like I said, I was I I was in a book and then I was giving I I would talk at spiritualist groups and I would go down and I would do like hours talks and stuff and they would like have a love offering so I could get a little bit of gas money but I would just talk about the synchronicity of how I listened to one podcast and everything magical started happening because I believe and so and it's happening again because it's like happening to me like literally again right now as we're talking the same exact Mm -hmm. pattern of things and it's all good and it's like but this time it's like so much more brighter and happier and lighter and it's like when I went to Casadega, it's a spiritualist camp that's a shoot off of um, Lilydale in Pennsylvania, down here in Florida. But Lilydale, oh, no. in, the, in the winter, they come down here and they read at Casadega. And, but in oh. at Halloween, and these the people at Casadega are real. And I got a picture of a fairy, a real fairy in Casadega. The only picture I got was in Casadega at the portal that's there. Um, but the first reading I got, they told me, you're an ancient soul from a planet called Metzger. Okay, and this was like when the internet was still dial up, Metzger. And I looked it up and it was like this, it was a planet that was, the sun burnt out, right? So, but this was before, this was before Pluto became a non, a planetet. Because I, <laughs> I, well, I think we pushed into a different timeline because now Metzger doesn't exist anymore at all. Like I can't find it anywhere. And I wow. know it existed because it affected, I, it, it was one of those points where I moved home so abruptly before a fire crossed 95 north on in Florida. Wildfires were raging that year. And if I had waited any another minute, I wouldn't have gotten home. So it was like an egress type of thing. But so I went to Casadega for Halloween. They gave me a reading. They said, you're ancient. You're from Metzger. It's the planet that the Atlanteans came from, took physical people to Lyra and then to earth like that's how they seeded earth it was before lyra and before antares and before the whole mayan interstellar metzger was supposedly before all of that where bipedal started and but we were energy you know because we were still descending from 12th dimension so we were energy and that's where they were like okay well let's go to this third dimension over here and do an experiment called earth and that's when they got the idea for the Lemurians and the Atlanteans to come here from the Pleiades and that's when they did the call out and I was part of that so I seeded it and then when we got here this I mean Atlantis was around for 280,000 years so I mean people people have lived hundreds of lifetimes and Lemuria overlapped just a little bit but was the other way 
it was an older civilization, mostly from, I, I feel mostly from the Pleiades because I'm not highly from the Pleiades. I'm more from the masculine side of things, even though I'm gay, which is how I'm balancing my feminine energy, honestly. But so I've been finding recently you and some other people that I've been reconnecting with that are from Antares, not Arcturus, which the Antares is the divine female and you're females. So it makes sense, you know, it's kind of weird how everything is going together. But so sure. at the beginning, Atlanteans, we were, we looked like cocoon, like that movie cocoon, you know, we glowed, like we didn't need to Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you're right. Like, it was starting to be Apple with Okay, now it's hard to hear you again. See, I'm sorry, we have to back up from the cocoon part. Glow like on the, the cocoon people. Right, the cocoon movie, cocoon. We gl- like, that's how we glowed, like that. Like, we cor- right. corporeal. Like, we didn't necessarily need to be in physical form, but most, we were kind of descending a little bit because we were going scientifically because the earth was so crystalline and it was beautiful and, like, we wanted to find out everything about it. But... You know what I mean? Like that's how, how my side of, and I worked like in the healing temples because I found oh. the crystals that I used in Atlantis in this lifetime. So it's kind of weird. And it, like we're on our last life and I'm wrapping it up and that's, I'm using the objects that I have before to connect to Arcturus from Atlantis. And a lot of people are, that's where a lot of the crystals come from because, you know, but anyway, so the golden age of Atlantis was, you know, I don't know BC wise when it was because you can't even tell Atlantis was ever here, you know? So I'm not thinking of a time frame like that, but when we start right. to descend more and do more physical and, you know, st- like, I mean, we didn't hardly eat food when we first got to earth, you know? So we cultivated terraforms, pulled the earth down because the earth wasn't necessarily in three dimensions when we got here, when it was here either. So it all kind of settled, you know, like, and it's okay, now we're in this experiment, kind of like how we all jumped in line to get to the earth in the first place, you know, and we're like, okay, yeah. so now we're, we're all here. The whole earth is conscious now. It's great. And we're dinosaurs. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's crazy. Dinosaurs terraform planets because there needs to be resources. But anyway, <laughs> so that leads me back to the garden. It was like the Garden of Eden before the apple was eaten. And I have a theory and a, I've been a knowing that the the snake in the Garden of Eden was actually the first reptilian. Oh, it could be. Could be. Right? Like that's the thought that I got because like, Right now, the Arcturians and the, and the Federation is blocking all of that, so we don't even have to worry about it. But thank God, yeah, right? I know. Yeah, thank God, because like it was getting kind of scary until we time leaped. Because like, <laughs> I had a ghost whistling in my house, and I'm like, not like in this one. Anyway, so Atlantis, back to Atlantis. In the middle frame of Atlantis, everyone had like a generator crystal. Like it was all about crystals and. Oh, I'm sorry. You now you're fading out again. Try it again. No. So, uh, crystals and right. So it was all about fractals and the bending of light because we were descending and cre- going into the third dimension. It was kind of like, oh my god, I just had a realization. It was exactly the length of time that we're going up now. If that makes okay. sense, you know what I'm saying? Because it was the one third going down to the third dimension and creating it now we're done with it so we're on the third going back up so we have two thirds more way so we're probably going to go back to like Antares and Arcturus you know what I mean like living backwards a little bit raising up going back to God which is what they were trying to do in Lemuria and Atlantis they were trying to hold that that hold that without religion and spiritual but see then religion came in and science came in and that's when we became super fourth dimensional into the third you know like it, it and crystals didn't right. work anymore and we, we started misusing magic and that was like right right after the golden age like but the golden age everyone's house was thought forms charged by your crystal so the crystal was in your property and i mean no one really owned property and animals like could talk telepathically and no one owned animals either they were your friends and they your brothers and your sisters if that makes sense. 
like sister cow and other chicken. Or, right, or, of course. You know what I mean? Like it, it's kind of like I don't. I haven't researched Inca and Mayan too too much because I feel their parallels to Arcturus and Antares are so similar that it it just is, you know. So. I don't know if they called like father chicken or father cow, but there wasn't stables there. They had beds and homes. Like, but again, it was all made of thought form from crystals. So if the animal felt like it wanted to change its color, it could change its color. If you wanted to have wings at the very beginning of Atlantis, you could be whatever you wanted to be at that point. But we fell when we, st- I mean, I'm not really sure what triggered everyone to be third dimensional but that's what happened we became third dimensional and that's when they started doing you know and i think it's because and i don't remember too too much of this because i don't tend to i tend to be more humble and full of integrity in my soul meaning that i wish that there were lives that i never had slaves or whatnot but right right lived like literally we both lived hundreds of thousands, if not a million lives. We've been around for 87 billion years because that's when yeah. Metzger was around 87 billion years ago. Because when I wow. researched, I got that reading originally from Casadega, I researched it and I was like, oh my God, this is great. I knew I was on the right path. And then I researched it. It was online. I saw Metzger. I saw about the planet. I, re- I, I printed stuff. I had it in binders, which my uncle later sold and got rid of because he thought I was worshiping the devil because he was a born again Christian. <laughs> he was a born again Christian. Yeah. Okay, so they went down the same path. But so that reading, the next night I went back, it was Halloween, but it was a spiritualistic, universalistic church where everyone gets a reading in the church. They're like, there's nothing for you here. You need to go back to New York where you're from. And at that point I was from Spencer, Massachusetts, not New York, but they did their right. job because two years later, my parents would move to New York when my uncle died of cancer. But well, so and he died at 52 which is weird it, it's but now he's my spirit guy so. but it was like so they're like go back to where you're from and get rid of that child ghost that you're um they said that i was like sucking the power from this ghost like a psychic vampire like, it was it was odd okay like they <laughs> talked talk to themselves and thought like and all i was really looking for was a mentor to guide me and mold me into something more and Every single time I've ever looked for that, I've always gotten that. It's in you. You are God. You don't need anyone else. And it's shown to me that. And then I meet people that need me. So it's better. You know what I'm saying? Because it's weird how my understanding and my remembrance. And then so they gave me a bad reading. And then I did. I shut down my ascension. I shut down. I didn't do readings anymore. I had to, I had been doing readings professionally using Dorian Virtue's card and a method that I found to use three different decks and then the gypsy cards and tarot cards on top of that. There's a method that I'm going to teach on my podcast eventually. But then, so like, I stopped everything. Like, I let negativity and someone else's judgment and fear get in the way. But then I, it, I mean, it was kind of weird because like there was a nexus there and there was a little marsh and a pond right and it was beautiful and that's where i got my first fairy picture and my only fairy picture ever i said willow wish to us i dig she malice and i took a picture and i said fairies please appear and it did and i went back to that spot only two years ago and it used to be a spiritual nexus where all the spirits around the area and there, there were willow wisps on the lake that are in that picture too it's dried up and it's it's completely dry now they sucked wow. energy out of that nexus and they used it up and that's why, I mean, I wasn't accepted there because like they didn't want to share and they didn't want to mentor me. So, and they thought I was going to steal their clients when it didn't even matter because I already had my client. Like it wasn't even about that. I was just trying to ascend. So I let them shut me down for 12 years. So I've been, oh. yeah, I was shut down for like 12 years. And then I started getting into music again and how and playing the flute and blowing clarinet. It's like fourth dimensional. It uses my soul to make fourth dimensional emotional connections to the air which is also like god and then it, i just started with crystals again because the crystals bring me back to atlantis like this is the earth where quartz is the primary element and crystals and diamonds exist you know it's like i don't know if it's like this on any other earth or any other sentient area where the crystals are so prevalent yeah. 
rainbows and it's connected to the astral, you know, like this is the focus right now. We are the focus. Something major is going to happen just like Atlantis because it's the same pattern, but we're going the opposite way. Atlantis, we were going down, descending because we were coming from perfection. Now, and I just got this. Oh my God, we're going back up because we're going back to God because it's on the way back, the 26,000 year cycle that you were talking about in one of your other podcasts, like, which is also the, and also the polar shift cycle. But that's what Atlantis triggered was the polar shift cycle. It, that makes a lot of sense. Right, it, it triggered the polar, because it was a 280,000 year cycle. But in that, when we, okay, so the end of Atlantis, I'm pretty sure we've gotten there, right? So the end, I mean, it was great. There was, but crystals are what brought me back to the ascension at this point, which made me realize that we're on our way back, passing Atlantis, arising, they were falling, but it's crystals that's going to get us there that we can tap into crystal. We, people have got to make crystal grit because crystals have an innate earth ability and it's only unique to earth because the frequency of the crystals are coded by mother earth. Kind of like we are pieces of God. Crystals are right. sentient beings that have life force from the mother. Can't be destroyed nor created. You know what I mean? It, it, it is what our earth is made of and it's what we need to go back into crystalline form. So it would only make sense that we have to use the crystals again. So it's kind of a recurring theme. We're on our way back, like in the last man, going back into an, the infinity circle, back towards the oneness. And instead, we're reversing what Atlantis did, but we have to create a whole new world because we destroyed it again. With fracking and like taking all the oil, which was the coolant spinning, making the earth spin faster, which makes time go by faster, which no one's been noticing. like getting closer yeah. our years are getting shorter because the sun is pulling us in harder because of the gravitational force and all of the solar flares like all of this was happening during the creation as well like it's the same thing that was happening when we were descending atlantis after the golden and when human beings got greedy and power and then not necessarily money at that point but then the crystals themselves became tools of power and trade and then when when we monetized the gift that mother earth gave us she gave it up she's like no more it's over and we yeah. went to earth but that is so sad but wow. oh, that's so sad it is and i remember we blew up the earth that's how the moon was formed like wow part of I, but I see an earth with two moons so I don't know if it's our earth it's kind of hard to explain well, there's also, yeah, there's the, also the Tiamat thing but that's a whole other story no, that's the other moon behind the sun or whatever I know exactly what you're talking about but that's oh, but guess what that's no, Metzger that. wait that yeah, planet yeah yeah planet X that's Metzger oh but it's because it's a dead planet it's kind of like a black hole planet and they won't, they don't want to acknowledge that it exists. And they wiped it from the internet history. You try to look up Metzger. I looked that up when I was 18 years old and I was awake. I was fully awake. This was before I got the bad reading from Casadega. I was on a high. I was like, oh my God, I'm part of God. I'm doing this. I can do anything. You know, like that reading was great. Like I'm feeling awesome. Like I went and I spoke to a group that night. Everything was great. I was like, got chills like I do right now because like and then ego it was all it's all about ego it's the same kind of reaction that happened in atlantis and i don't know what type of person i was in atlantis i know i was a mer person at one point but there were all types of people like you could turn into a merman if you wanted in lemuria you could turn into a unicorn if you wanted to because we were light bodies. You could turn into whatever you want. People turned into thunderbirds. That's where all of the mythological creatures. But it's like we were descending, and now we're ascending. So we're going to experience it all again. And it'll probably. You know what I mean? Because like it's all about the crystals, though. Because the crystals innately will vibrate at a frequency. You used to have to like wash them with salt and code them. No, you don't need to do any of that. And technically, but you do need crystals because like you don't really need other tools like divination cards and whatnot even though I do that and I feel like mediumship readings is kind of hard too but past life seems pretty easy for me but crystals 
you do need because that's what bridges the third and fourth dimension. It's what's going to protect us from the other things in the fourth dimension. Because they have right. and they they're like batteries of the earth. Aliens come right. to earth to mine crystal to use as keys and components in their spaceships. Like they because only earth has this type of crystal right now. Oh wow, wow. Well, I mean we use our watches and computers now. Wait, what? I mean, obviously crystals I mean crystals are used to power our watches and our computers and stores and stores and, stores and, and that's what that's what opened me up this time and connected me back to Atlantis. I found my crystal ball, but I'll I'll leave that for my podcast. That's an that's a crazy story. I told you, you know, off the air, but if you want to hear that story, yeah. definitely turn into a, what this um the star seed perspective i don't have it yes. but i'm gonna and i'm and because it, it's just like these crystal crystals have so much information in they've seen it all they are the eyes and the external fingers and like nodes of gaia and there's not much left in the internal of gaia which is being proven by the lava font under yellowstone because we mined all of the coolant away. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? And it and you can turn, you can't destroy matter, but you can turn liquid into a gas that escapes out of our stratosphere. Then it goes into outer space and dissipates. And guess what that does? It makes it even lighter. So we're spinning even faster. And time's going by even faster because the earth is probably in 2012, I'm pretty sure we kind of separated from that timeline. I think we did too. I feel like something definitely and there's a movie about this. I think it's called like Novatos or something where a comet comes by and alters time and the people go in time loops and stuff. And But it's proven like when a comet does come by of great force, it does shift gravity and the time differential, which, you know, Final Frontier space, I don't think so. Mr. Picard, the Final Frontier is time. Yeah, yeah, right? that makes sense. Isn't that deep though? Like for real, because guess what? We're about to go timeless. It's not going to matter anymore because we're... Well, at least most of us. I mean, I don't know. I can't predict that. But I know that I'm here to usher a lot of people because there's going to be a lot of natural disasters and it's going to be Atlantis again. And that's why I live in Florida, because Florida and the Yucatan Peninsula are what the Atlanteans crawled to and crushed each other to get to the little pieces of land once it, we destroyed it. And everyone knows, I mean, I, Atlantis was destroyed by some sort of genetic beasts getting loose, because the Lemurians, the Atlanteans, the bad Atlanteans, the scientific, scientific, heavy scientific Atlanteans that were supposedly influenced by the reptilians from Orion, like were genetically testing and combining DNA with the Lemurians because it was a lower race at that point and we were superseding them and they were dying out. They were really going to hide in the inner of the planet to wait for now, but or be to be picked up by their ETs because I mean this has been a hub like the Earth has been a hub and an experiment and like AP biology or Baker acting a whole bunch of people all at once so that we could learn everything and free up a whole ton of karma so that we could snap back and be God again and then be born again and do it all over again because it's all flows in cyclical patterns and we're about to experience. I mean, look at what's happening in California, the fires. Like, it was floods in Atlantis. It's fire. Right. And St. Germain what? and Hildegard, or Hildegard, I can't say it. Those two saints with the St. Germain. Maybe you should do a show on that. Oh, okay. You know what? Now we're losing it again. Let me open this up again. Okay, try it again. Uh, oh, it's like I, I just can't even hear you. Try to open up the space. Oh, my God. It's kind of, do you feel it? It's like, it, oh, I hate when this happens. I have to put a huge spear around myself. All right. It's just, it's like not, it's so weird. It's like not. Um, Hold on. Let me try this. I'll try this. Now I hear you. Now you're fine. Um, we just got to keep the energy field around us. Well, I have my Merlinite. 
I have my Atlantean key crystal and my Lemurian healing crystal. <laughs> I, ha I have a lot of crystal grids, and that's like the point of it being Atlantis, Atlantis being the stage and the thought of Atlantis. It, it, it was hubris and ego that did it, a thirst for power, maybe Orion influence and Sirius influence, Syrian, meaning, you know, like the DNA splicing they were doing because that was part of it too. The aliens came and it wasn't just the Atlanteans that were doing DNA splicing. And so we corrupted the crystals and kind of like the dark crystal, we like poo-pooed. Yeah. We didn't thank the crystals and we didn't talk to them and we didn't cohabitate with the we started taking over the earth and we started consuming in a third dimension and we had and then we fell really hard to the third dimension although some people say that atlantis floated up and my past life remembrance of atlantis i had my crystal ball that i use now it was a, a really large bowling ball size of green obsidian which can only be found in this one place in mexico and it, it's almost impossible to get a diameter of the size of it and you can feel the ocean in it um, but I was holding that and then a huge boulder came down and squished me and I, but I was a mer person. So wow. supposedly mer people weren't there at the end of Atlantis, but I think a whole crew, like kind of what's going on right now, but we were descending again, we were descending because ego was taking over it came from the seventh dimension or, a, you know, a higher dimension down to the third and that was perfect right. Atlantis. Well, when you're descending, nothing, it's going to all seem bad, you know? So, I, you know, it would be interesting to do some mathematics and see if it's been 260,000 years since. Because it would have to be. Uh, I have no idea, but yeah, it seems know. like it. it and know. everyone is talking about Atlantis suddenly. All of these New Age authors are cropping up, writing about Atlantis. People are suddenly having spontaneous memories of living there. Yeah, but People because, are going now. It's because the instead. thing's about to happen. We're about to go flooding and firing and like searching for land. It's going to be like you're the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. I'm, you know what though? When I was really doing readings professionally, and like in the flow of it. I mean, I'm better now, honestly, because I know my readings come out like great. It's crazy. It's it, because I've already done it and it's a whole time continuum thing when I use cards. Like I've already placed the cards. I've already done the reading. And I've already shuffled them and I've already encoded them. So it's kind of weird. So I kind of time travel when I'm doing it, which I black out and then I channel stuff too. So it's weird when I do them. But the th <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think you know what I'm saying. And that's why I came to you because I want you to teach me how to channel because dying to I don't care if I remember because I don't remember my readings or anything either but I don't and I I channel poems and I channel art you know I so I know that I channel things but it's like everyone can do this it's not just me no no <laughs> everyone, everyone can do it because everyone can do anything and everyone can to do develop. anything yes yes Right. I mean, <laughs> it's true, though. And it's and like when you feel that and I'll admit, like I've been seeing some creepy, crazy things when I'm meditating with the binaural beats and like the isochronic stuff and the pineal gland. Opening. Yeah. Just listen to this. Do the pineal gland opening. Go to YouTube, search pineal gland, binaural and isochronic beats. You have to have both. Right. Really, you need like head canceling, you know, wicked expensive headphones, but you need earbuds you will feel like you're levitating, your your pineal gland will start vibrating no matter who listens to this. I'm telling you, this is a good one. It's blue, is the best. I'll link it to your thing and you can share it. <laughs> no, because like, I, I was being abducted by my starseed family. And it freaked me all out because I came down from it. And this is after getting back into crystals because of my Atlantean memories. I came back, oh, and I just noticed that all my curtains are that shade of green that Atlantis what that this is crazy because Florida is what's left of Atlantis so that's why I'm here I'm sure of it but I went yeah I forgot colors where. yeah it's yeah. like it's not it wasn't it's kind of like if you've seen the handmaiden's tail that teal that was the color of royalty in Atlantis once yeah and red but there were mages and there were different orders of magic users kind of like the Illuminati and all that crap so like they had their own costumes but once we start, it was like a chiffon, like flowy and, you know, like that teal color. It wasn't purple. 
Oh, I can't wait till we go no. back to the Purple Planet, though. Oh my god, that was so beautiful. Yeah, it's all teal. I I remember. Yeah, I kind of remember it, but I don't. It I don't green. really remember. It's bits and I get bits and snippets of memory from there. I do remember, I remember at that time. I remember, or at least I was a human, but I had gills in my neck and I could swim in the ocean and it was never cold to me. I could just go and I felt comfortable and I could breathe underwater. Right, exactly. And I had that memory too, and that was on the way out because I think there was a rescue team to go in there to, find, to save the artifacts and the knowledge. Oh, wow. We came from Alpha Centauri because the Alpha Centaurians watched over the Atlanteans and tried to help them, but it was inevitable because you have to fall to the first dimension to come back. Okay. Like my poem. Can I read my poem? Hold on, hold on. Turn into a, a robotic voice. Hold on. Open this face up again. Oh my God, it's forced to love. Willow wish to watch us today. She your malice. There's too many things around me, but okay, I'm gonna put the thing down. Maybe that will help. Because I want to read this poem because it fits perfectly with, you know, like that poem that says the energy rises, it falls, it ceases. You know, it, it describes what we're going through perfectly, you know? Okay, so. Okay. I channeled, and this was channeled information. When I was asked to be in the book, like all my information that I can put around my podcast book. I'll okay. I'll I'm- all right, let's open this face up again. It's it's starting to fade again. All the beings are like crowding around you. They want to be a part of it so much. I know they're and blocking- I blocking I wish I could, but I have to think of a blockage that I need to hit the for. Yeah, they have to step back from the mic so we can hear you. You gotta tell them they my, it when I my friend Cheryl has dragons. They do the same thing to her, and it's like, oh my god, her name is Echo. Okay, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, there we go. I can hear you better now. Okay, so my main spirit guide is named Pataya, which okay. is actually a goddess in Chile. You might see her around because, like, I channeled this drawing of her, which I'll send to you. And then I looked it up. It's not Chile. It's somewhere in South America, though, where there's a town called Pattaya. And it's I'll look it up. It might be in Peru. It's in Peru. You're right. But Sounds like Peru. Oh, my God. And the, the drawing I did in charcoal that's framed right now, it has berries in it. And she's coming out of it. She's growing out of this rose. Hip. And then, like, it, I looked, I Googled it, and I saw her the face that I drew. And I don't draw people faces. Wow. Wow, I'm going to look it up. I'm not either. So I think things are like elevating to a point where like, you know, it's like everyone's spirit guide is going to be becoming a goddess because we're forming and we're joining back with our individuality but just so that we can be born. Like, like I was wow. saying, like, Atlantis descended. We're now back on the opposite side of Atlantis, coming back up. So we only have positive love for it. Right. Okay, so now, can you so I can read my poem then? Okay, just open up the space again. Tell your people to all the spirits around you to kind of spread right. out a little. <laughs> spread out. <laughs> it's like the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's worse. I'm so hot right now. I'm opening the portal to you. I, I am too. Yeah, I'm like burning up. So yeah, okay. Here we go. I don't know where I channel this information, this, these poems from, but maybe I channel it. I'm thinking from the same person that you channel your stuff from, maybe. And that's our connection? I channel from all over the universe. I channel... The you people. channel all my stuff and you teach me that because... Uh, I'll teach you how to read cards, divine, any fortune tell, read pagan trails, although I would come back with the All right. My Google Home is now showing me the Orion constellation because Google Office listens to you. No. Like, yeah, it, I used to, I, had, I spent hours as a child staring at Orion. I'm so glad you told me that I'm actually, I lived in Orion quite a bit because I felt such a connection to that star system. Oh, Pleiades. Me- what, did you see your Pleiades chart? 
Yeah, I like yeah, I like looking at the Seven Sisters too. I'm always looking at the Pleiades as well. Those are the two ones I'm always. My whole life, I've been staring at them. <laughs> I always looked up into the sky and I saw lights that blinked yellow, blue, green, and red. Oh, oh yeah. They would always blink at me, and I was like, "Do normal people see these?" Like, I questioned <laughs> everything because I was an outcast. You know, it was like I didn't start off Mr. Popular. I joined a LARPing crew that was a secret coven that was fighting reptilians. And I was an outcast, oh. and they were making fun of me the whole time, you know? So it was like, it wasn't the easiest start out. No, God, no. Confidence to know that I'm a true creator. Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, anything I've ever put my mind to, all I got to do is pray to Willowish to us, I'll get help from the fairies. And I use positive affirmations, like, to get my house, like, everything. Nice. Okay, so here's the poem. I'm gonna say it, and if you know if it's if it's not a good quality, I can send you the clip through Anchor, and you can add it to the episode. Okay. Well, okay, all right. Okay. So the soul's journey. All who read this listen to your soul. Now you have the power and ability to grow. You are not alone. There are hundreds around. You search and search, answers unfound. You will not use your eyes to see the truth. Instead, you will find your heart connected to youth. The children born now are much connected, special souls with much intended. Listen to them and combine their message with yours as the power grows into a double-edged sword. Justice judges what is right and wrong. The leaders they lead without a song. A passion, a light, a spark within. We hold all power to create and begin. Begin the journey to your reality as you see these things in your eyes, but you only do see. Each person soon will create their own worlds. Much of what is taught comes in energy swirls. It rises, it falls, and then it intent increases. Pauses and stops, and then it ceases. It merges with your purpose and power and creates your reality as a beautiful flower. So, like, that's, I, like, want to cry every time I read that. And I have... I love it. There's, like, smiling so... One talks about... Can I read one more? Yeah, 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 please do. <laughs> yeah, this one always makes me cry. It's called Calling All Angels. And it's shaped like an angel. I call my oh. angels, I call my angels to my side. They come without hesitation or pride. They are here to help, heal, and wonder. They hear my cries like a shot of thunder. My cries, they echo out across the night. They come to release me of fear and fright. I feel the wings of their angelic heritage. They try to help without the thought of lineage. They know the Father, the Creator, the Divine. They ask you to remember the lost, the hurt, and the time. Healing will come, they whispered in my ear. You may have to wait a minute, a week, a year. In the time of this, the waiting game is the time you need to be able to regain. Your personal power, the thoughts and flowers, the beauty of life is found in strife. You will be fine, the angel will say. Release your hurt, your struggles, and pains. Release them all to the Divine through me. I'll bring them to God, a solution you will see. Ooh. Right? Like, I and I know you had that kid on with the other poems, but like, that was pure. I don't know where that came from. And I want to figure, like, I see things with my eyes now and I'm regaining my memory using crystals. Like, I'm telling you out there, if you look into crystal grids, you can do, you don't, need 20 million crystals you need just four amethyst crystals and one quartz crystal you can start a crystal grid in your house four four rose quartz crystals and an obsidian will protect your house the power earth is trying to help us to not kill ourselves and we keep skipping right. because we keep messing up and right like we're trying to walk and we're toddlers and we're trying to fly we keep skinning our knees, but we don't even need our knees, and we just don't know it yet. <laughs> you know, I did. A- I'm channeling I'm something cr- at this point. I don't even know what I'm saying, honestly. <laughs> I, you you were talking to me earlier about minotaurs. What was about minotaurs? We have to hear about that. Like half beasts came about with like the genetic defects from Atlantis from their genetic experiments on the Lemurians. And in my research. But, and what I believed to be true was that guess who was a Lemurian and guess who was an Atlantean? Goebbels 
doing the remote viewing and experiments on the twins in World War II. And then they did psychic oh. experiments on people, remember? And they found a UFO. Like, that was all so it, Atlantean. It was ridiculous. Yes. It was very, and guess what, though? But it was on the way up. It was the other side of it. That was the Holocaust. Atlantis destroyed in a Holocaust, kind of like Pompeii. Maybe Pompeii was part of it. But it was destroyed in a Holocaust, all of Atlantis. And now we're, the World War II was on the other side of that Holocaust. We're on the way back up. And it's, there's nothing that's going to be able to help it. Because guess what? If you stay down, the Earth is no longer there. Third, yeah. that's the Third dimension is falling away like Mario running across that bridge to Bowser. It's not going to be there. So you better move ahead or you're going to be in a spirit form. I mean, it's going to be, we're going to be close enough to spirit. And with something you said on one of your past podcasts is like, it, the spirit seventh dimension will raise to the ninth and we will raise to the seventh. And that's exactly how it goes until we hit the one. And that's the 13th dimension. And that's like a kind of lucky number. But then we, 13 is resolution and karma too in numerology. We pop back to yeah. the one into God and then no one's anyone anymore we're all the one and then it starts all over again I don't necessarily think the planets are going to be destroyed but you know black holes are kind of part of the process too right so so but the minotaurs were now they were Lemurians right they were the genetic defects of the DNA splicing and the experiments that the, that the Atlantean scientific Atlanteans that ended up killing the earth and the crystals and going the wrong way with ego and power and the, ones, the red wizards I think they called them and those are the ones who actually overloaded the crystal which acted like a nuclear bomb which blew up the main crystal which was the but see the temple to Poseidon was still left at the very end which is part of Florida in the Bermuda Highway the temple's under it's in the Bermuda Triangle that's what's at the bottom of it is the temple to Poseidon from Atlanta and I mean the temple to Poseidon from Atlantis is now underneath the, the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, Bimini Highways. The Bimini Highways, those were our trade routes to the land to trade with the Native what? Americans. I mean, there were Native what? peoples here. Which is crazy. Like, like it, it is crazy, but as soon as we hit third dimension, it's like life burst out. And so did attitude, emotion, everything. Evil, everything burst out. Like Pandora's box. And that's what so, that was also that is another relation that in if you research Atlantis is related to the myth of Pandora's box and it may be actually the happening of Pandora's box when they blew up the crystal center that was it released even more negativity because it was a scar in the earth. Oh wow. But that scar is healed right. I mean that was so long ago. I mean an ice age and you know fill the gap wow so why do you suppose the Bermuda Triangle makes so many ships and planes disappear what is down it's what the Lyrians use to travel the spaceships that go under the water they use that portal to go to their home world Alpha Centauri oh okay so that would make sense so where do you suppose they're going do you think that ships are accidentally no, we're going backwards. We're kind of like living the descension backwards to ascend, but we're not walking backwards. We're, you know, we're we're restructuring the soul energy, which forms a supernova, if that makes sense. We're turning into a sun, and then we create again. We're all suns. That's great. yeah. That's maybe a bit much for the scope of this. <laughs> yeah, but you're in the end where of the golden sun, right? Yeah. Right, and I just got that. See, I don't know where I got that message from either, but I didn't know that was the name of where you're at. The, well, I'm sorry, what? Isn't there what, like, you, a place called the land of the golden sun near you? Oh, dude, I just saw an alien. Oh my god. <laughs> your head. They love discussion, so they do show up during these episodes. Yeah, but it's your guy. I know it. it's him. What's his name, Edward or something? And I have so many. <laughs> you can take some of my fairies and I'll take some of your aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no one else Dep- in this 
I haven't come across anyone else other than my friend Sierra, who's going to be on my podcast too. And maybe we can like do a three way. Well, that sounded weird, but maybe we can. <laughs> we can. Yeah. She sounds just like you. So I swear to God, like when we're talking to her, like thinking it's you. It's like crazy. And I did both your charts out, and you kind of fit. And she's from Ontario, so ladies, just like you, heavy, heavy. So it's like it's weird. It's like the female is joining the male. And it's weird because you're over there in Ecuador and I'm over here on the other side you're where Lemuria remnants are. I'm where Atlantean rem remnants are. You're from Ontario and Pallades. I'm from Arcturus and Alpha Centauri, which is heavy, heavy male. And if I feel like not necessarily us that's gonna meet, being in the middle. And then when that happens, all bars lost. We're gonna, I mean, people are gonna start to lose their individuality because we're gonna reform into either a son or God the one without it's like when I had a body experience God asked me if I wanted to lose my individuality yet. I said no I was like right. I'm good <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm good I want to be me still right I, and the first thing that I thought when I got when I, I was like oh shit I died again oh it's great <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like getting into a hot tub, but not the hot kind of burns and falls. Like the perfect temperature. It's like, there's no more temperature. There's no more weight. There's no more fat. There's no more, I'm this, I'm that. There's no more bills. There's no more worrying. I'm not telling you to go kill yourself, but it's fucking great, man. Like, that's why I've done it three times. Like, not on purpose, but my soul yeah. doesn't have this body anymore. I want to be three dimensional so bad that I want to be seven dimensional. Because that's what progression souls rise bodies fall yeah for sure I mean like really no for real I, yeah I'm so I'm so happy we're ascending this is so much better I mean I, know, but I feel so weird that it's like literally the back end of it penis. like I never even connected that until this phone call so right now this is crazy it's awesome it just makes sense though because that was like a descent of you right. know could you imagine when we hit the first dimension when was that it's like hell fuck that i don't want to be one dimensional and then two dimensional oh my god i'm gonna be a flat thing oh my god we were all i could have fall through a crack in the floor like there were no floors because we're all flat like how long do you think we were two dimensional for like a second a millisecond like yeah no this like we're so much bigger than this. Like, wait until you like have an out of body of experience or like actually ask to travel. Like you are like ten times the size of the planet Earth, man. You just keep going. Uh, yeah, I've gotten I've got I've gotten out of my body, like actually during meditation and I was like bigger than the swirling it was enormous. I was like, how is this possible? Like, how is my soul that big? The whole top roof of my house, man. Like, like, how are my eyes this big? Because I don't have a body. Exactly. It's so weird. It's so weird. I cannot wait. Oh, and that, like, you know how, like, when we jumped into this earth, like, literally, we all jumped into the pool, and some of us waited around and were spirit guides for other people. Like, living that backwards, that's going to be so cool. Like, because, like, there's still going to be third dimension somewhere. So when we're fifth dimension, we're going to be like the Pleiadians helping other people because it's all yeah. special. Isn't that crazy to think about? I just got that too. Oh my God. <laughs> my are like and I'm so hot right now. I'm so glad I met you. Like, I know I've known you. I knew you like 32 million years ago. Probably. Oh I. It'll, it'll, it'll come to me eventually. I don't always remember people. And chart, look at your chart. Like, you, you, the ancients are coming back, and we are them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, the rules are not. You have to. Oh, you. Well, you have to die and go out of body to get the eighth chakra. Well, honey, everyone's got twelve chakras, and we've got twelve times twelve times twelve times twelve chakras. So get over that. You don't need a book to tell you that anymore. You, like, you don't. It's not like you don't need like pendulums and all that crap. You just trust yourself. Your gut instincts, the feelings you're getting are real. The things you're seeing out of the corner of your eyes, they're real. They're there to help you because nothing bad's gonna happen because we're on our way back up, man. Like, it's gonna feel great. Like, it's gonna be weird because, like, I vibrate so bad, like, it scares me a little bit. Like, 
doing the binaural beats and everyone doing the chronic beats doing different things like different forms of chakra things beating your spirit guides arcturian look for this one arcturian dna activation like there's so many different programs those are just some of the ones that i've done like seeing things like i see things when i meditate all experiences like i go through it's kind of crazy once you get to that level it's like there's not much left except for like magic <laughs> right i mean like the next step is magic's going to come back and it's already started yeah it's already started i feel it i start talking about it too all right. this all this so it's used the, the crystals created because like we're going to need them because crystals are fourth dimensional in their own nature yeah they're fourth dimensional but it's the tool to get to the fifth it's pretty cool man right and then like i think the tones of the flute like it's kind of crazy it's like it's really it's, oh my god we've been on the phone for this long oh god, it's five in the morning man Oh my god. I know I need to I need to get this uh published. So I always with going or anything so like I hope people like really like connect with the poems too because like that's the, it's got to come from our trains and I, when I channeled all that stuff I didn't realize I was channeling aliens but my the my own family you know like star seed star seed is a concept that goes over in the conversations with the children and now by Dr. Mick Dr. Lucy the book I was in it they go over star seeds but when i was reading this, I'm like I'm just in what's a star seed you know ooh, ooh. voice is changing someone's trying to overlay you i feel I like they're trying did you hear that i heard like a i can't even describe it 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 was i saw a green alien trying to speak through you right man i'm a champion right? yeah Oh, and so anyway, we're we're running out of time. Maybe we could do that on another show, but um so we need, we're running out. Of time. I want to say thank you so much and your your podcast is The Star Seed Perspective. Right? Are we there? Now I can't even hear you at all. They're crowding you again. You, I, I can't even hear you. You got to um, open up that. Tell them to step. Okay, step back. It's okay. I'm not going to relay you because I can't hear you like that yet. Oh. All right. Well, thank you so much yeah. to come being here. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're trying to like overpower us. <laughs> they just, they want to be a part of it so bad and we can't hear them yet. I want to be a part of it. I want them to come and like meet me. Like, come on, I'm like, I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah, it's I, I channel so many beings from so many places now. It's crazy, it's but I, I. It's your fault. <laughs> you know, it, well now that because we're going to be synergistically working together now, and it's just going to be an explosion of more energies. <laughs> positive things with you and like that other person that I met that I was trying to do positive things with that blocked me like it was so weird it's like obviously like they didn't see positive things either I'm like how could you not like I don't understand right. how people can't handle me I don't get it but I can't I'm I'm weird I guess maybe it's just because we're weird <laughs> I know but we're weird. literally like you're, you're from Antares I'm from Arcturus. You know what? That's probably what they said. I'm from Mercury. You're from Venus. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. <laughs> Women are from Arcturus, and men are from Arcturus. Okay, <laughs> let's get <Right>. this straight. <laughs> that would be the great a great name for a book, actually. Oh my God, it would be. We should do that together. Okay, there we go. That's what we should do together. <laughs> and like bring in like shamanistic alien shamanism. Oh my God. Okay, well. Yo, you just invented something we have to do now. <laughs> I love inventions. That's the nature of Arcturus, though. The inventions. Like the, the sentient mind going seventh dimensional. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, we revealed something. Like, seriously, going back from the time frame of World War II, going to Atlantis, the Holocaust, and now we're coming back up. Like, I don't know if anyone's realized all this yet. I think you just did. No, I, <laughs> I can't wait till people hear it and like make comments. And I want to see like 
I love seeing it when people understand, but like, or if they're even just a little bit interested, but not scared, like, you know, it's, it is kind of expansive. It's like, it, and expanding is a little bit scary because you literally keep going and you just get bigger and bigger. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the Atlanta's connection and well, we're, it fell and now we're growing back up and everything's going to be fine. It's going to be great. Because guess what? All the things that weren't going to come with us are already gone. I mean, right. I feel like there are some like 1% awakers that are just killers, like the background of the Matrix, like the people that make traffic because ugh, traffic, you know, but whatever. Soon we'll just be able to yeah. fly right through that shit. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. I think we're getting better. Everything is getting better. I see the manifestation that Almost it, it's now, like three minutes. It's like seriously, like it's crazy fast now. And that's how you I know, know on the verge of going piercing through the dimension, through it, like completely. Yeah, I mean, we're already anchored in the fifth, but I just feel like the manifestation, once we clear away all of our weird beliefs of weird dimensional, we're getting... Because we'll see the aliens, right? As we're seeing their shadows up now, they're going to be like, hey, what's up? I'll be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Dude, get out of my shower. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait. I just hope they kind of look mostly like us. But I really do think humans are the perfection. Like, we are the closest to God on this earth and that was part of it but we didn't treat the earth very badly yeah we had to know separate you know union again right right okay yeah. well we should like look into the Antares and Arcturus mind interdimensional map thing for an episode because that's the whole balancing of the female male and that's why I mentioned it. so that I, you're yeah. channeling can help me channel and I can help you do the, whatever you need to do yeah, I would definitely like to talk about that again. Okay, well let's let's say goodbye for now, and thank you so much, Jude, for coming on. Um, Starseed Perspective is the podcast. Go ahead and look for that. It's going to have some wild stories coming up on there. <laughs> All the way from LARP, it goes from LARPing to drag queening, honey. All right. <laughs> Seventeen. My dad had to bring me all dressed. It was crazy. You'll hear that on my podcast. <laughs> oh, I can't Ooh, I can't wait. I, I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna favorite it. You, right. can, you can come and co-host with me channel stuff. Like it'll be great. Don't worry. I've got two apprentices that want to learn. They're baby, baby, babies, and I'm gonna have them do a segment every week too, where they like take up a skill, like pendulums, and learn it for the first time. And like that excitement, I can't wait. Ooh, I can't wait too. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we will we will talk to you later. And that's it, you. guys. I'm I you again. Love you. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to say to my audience, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being on this ascension journey with me. Dag, now that it cut me off right at the end, I wanted to say, you guys, thank you so much for being on the Ascension journey with me, with all of us together. We're all in the same boat because we're all one, and we're moving towards that union, whereas Atlantis was moving farther away from the union and then go to the very bottom. Atlantis crashed. We're rising back up, and that's where we are now in the Ascension part of that. Thank God we're on the other side and we made it. Yay! Anyway, I wanted to thank you guys. Sorry it's so late. I had so many crazy... I mean, you know how Mercury Retrograde goes with the electronics. I mean, it took like two hours for it to not move and then all of a sudden 20 minutes to move up by 20%. Crazy. I And then, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the electronics, but all in God's timing, right? So we're going to do what we can do when we can do it. And that's all we can do. <laughs> Besides the fact that we are becoming timeless and eventually the time just won't matter anymore. Anyway, I love each and every one of you. Thank you so, 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 so much. But now, uh, oh, and tomorrow I'll be back with our original and unique programming as always. But now I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes 
of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, guys. Peace out. Do you ever wish you could look into the next chapter in your book of life and see what's coming next? What does the universe have in store for you? I can help you with that. I will give you a Celtic cross reading, which is 10 cards, or you can ask me three questions and I use three cards per question. So that's nine cards, or I can channel your higher guidance, or maybe God directly for you. Maybe you want to talk to your dear departed Aunt Edna, because maybe you have a few questions and she was the smartest person you knew. If your deceased relatives are available or your ascended masters, I can channel them for you personally. Let me have one hour to show you the future in your next chapter of your book of life. Readings are $75 and it takes me an hour to an hour and a half to complete. And for this price, you will also be hooked up to the healing grid around the planet for free, which means yours truly, me, I will be giving you Reiki 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life. All you have to do is let me know. Metaphysical soul speak at gmail.com and we will explore your future together.